Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be having a bit of an organise and a bit of a sort out of the office and spare room. So if you've been here for a while, you will know that I have done a few makeovers of the office spare room space over the years. And over the years, there's been a bit of a recurring theme in that it does tend to become a bit of a dumping ground, shall we say. <laughs> and it's one of those spaces that very quickly gets quite messy. And with the loft declutter happening, I needed to create some more storage space in the home to accommodate some of the items that I will be keeping that will go back into the loft and to kind of create a little bit more temporary storage for the time being. So with that in mind, I'm going to organize the space better and also install some new shelves into one of the alcoves to better use that space. And hopefully this will be useful to some of you. Maybe you've got a space in your home that needs that little bit more organization or storage. And I think this is quite a nice solution. It didn't cost too much either. It's all done on a budget. So if you have got space that needs a little bit more of a sort out or maybe you've created a home office recently, I know many of us are working from home at the moment, then hopefully this video will be useful to you as well. Before we jump into the video, I want to say thank you to Miko who are sponsoring today's video. They've sent me over one of their dehumidifiers to try out, so I'll be telling you a bit more about them later on. Okay, quick sip of the coffee and let's take a look at the office before I got started. So this is the current situation in here. I mean, I have cleared the floor space, by the way. There was more stuff thrown onto the floor, but I've got that out of the way so we can actually get into here. So this is how it is looking. I've pulled out a lot of photograph albums I wanted to sort out. I've got stuff that usually goes under the bed that just isn't fitting under there because I've just been rushing, throwing stuff down there, weights, random stuff. And then over here, we have the mirror and this is where the mirror used to be. So what I'm going to do is actually move the mirror back to where it used to be because I want to utilize this space here better. So essentially we've got a bit of a dead space at the end of the bed. I did have some plants hanging down here, but those have all been moved now. So I want to actually introduce a new bookshelf that I've got for this space, just a freestanding one that should fit in there perfectly. And that will give us a little bit more storage I'm hoping that can help me organize because this situation is not great. So we've got, yeah, very messy, a supplies cupboard here it's just got into a mess and as you can see <laughs> the order is no longer there so it needs to be sorted out so yeah I've got lots to do so I'm gonna get cracking okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is build the bookshelf that I actually picked up from Argos. Argos are quite handy for the old click and collect at the moment so that's where I got it from it was 35 pounds and I was having a look at the Billy bookcases from Ikea, which I think are around the same price point, but with my transport situation, I thought it'd be better just to get one of these as it's easier for me to collect because postage with Ikea can be quite expensive, can't it, if you're just buying one thing. So here we are. And this one is actually by Habitat. So I thought it's actually quite a nice looking bookshelf and the reviews on it are really good. For £35, I'm liking what I saw on the picture. So hopefully it will be as nice in real life. So we'll get this built and then we'll see how it turns out. And if you found yourself in a situation where maybe you need to create a bit of a home office at the moment, I do recommend maybe just investing in something like this if you do need to kind of organize your area a bit better. If it's gonna improve your day-to-day -day life, I think for 35 pounds, that sort of thing, it might be a good investment even if it is temporary because you could always sell a piece of furniture on afterwards or just redonate it. So yeah, if you're struggling and you've got chaos <laughs> like me, then maybe something like this in the home could be a good option for you as well. But yeah, I'll get it built and then we can see how it turns out and I'll be able to recommend it or not for you but you gotta work real hard i know you want it to be easy so let your guard down and i say see it in your mind trust that have what it takes inside because you can make it too 
I've stopped. I've already gone wrong. I put this one back to front. That's the front, isn't it? Honestly, I think I'm concentrating and it still happens. We will do this one again. Had great patience, but something knocked you out. You felt your limitations and filled your mind with doubt. You wanna stay chill right now and don't let your eyes. lowered it into position well it's looking quite good space above as well so I'm tempted to maybe hang a shelf up here we shall see but yeah pleased with how it's fitting and it comes with these flexible brackets that are used to just keep it um, up against the wall so it can't be pulled forward obviously the bed's going to probably save it from toppling over but as these screws are already here from the mirror before I'm just going to utilize those and pop these on just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Honestly, there's something about building flat pack furniture which always tips me over the edge, no matter how organized I think I'm being with my egg box, sorting out all the different screws and nuts and bolts, reading the instructions twice, I still always manage to screw something in the wrong way around. Can anyone else relate to that? Or is it just me? But anyway, it's time for me to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, who is Miko, who sent me over one of their dehumidifiers to try out. In case you don't already know what a dehumidifier is, it's an appliance that will remove excess moisture from the air. Some signs that you might have some excess moisture in your home are things like a damp feeling in the air, maybe you've spotted some mold or some mildew in certain rooms, not something that any of us want to see, is it? Or clothes and washing might take longer to dry than usual, that sort of thing. But for me, it's usually condensation on the windows that I spot first at this time of year. Sometimes there's so much excess moisture on the windows in the bedroom particularly. So when Miko reached out and asked me if I'd like to try one of their dehumidifiers, I was absolutely delighted to. They can also be handy for addressing damp in any annex rooms or garages and that sort of thing. And if you're doing any renovation work, they can also be handy for drying out walls and plaster, especially if we're getting lots of rainy days when things just never seem to dry, do they? So this is the one that they sent me. This is the Miko Dry ABC Dehumidifier, and they've sent me the 12 litre one. They also do a 20 litre one, which is suitable for properties with maybe five bedrooms or more, so that's got more power to it. And they also do a slightly smaller one, which is the 10 litre one that would be suitable for smaller flats as there's less air to treat. And the 12 litres means that this will extract 12 litres of water per day at temperatures of 30 degrees Celsius. A couple of the main things to think about when buying a dehumidifier are the noise that it's going to make and also the amount of energy that it's going to use. The Miko is ultra quiet at just 35 decibels. So it sounds similar to a computer hum. A good one if you do need to leave it on overnight or when you're trying to sleep. And in terms of energy efficiency, it only costs 2.4p per hour hour based on 15.2p per kilowatt hour. So really efficient to use. It's not going to cost you too much money on your electricity bills at all. It also has a laundry mode, so it's efficient at drying your laundry quickly. All you need to do is press the laundry button and at 2.4p per hour, it works out much cheaper than using a tumble dryer. It also has a target humidity setting, so you can set the target humidity and the machine will run until it meets that and it will switch off and monitor the humidity of the room and only switch on again when it needs to. It switches off automatically when the 2.6 litre tank is full. You can attach a garden hose to it to run straight into your bath or a sink so you can leave it running that way if you prefer to. Another thing I really like about this product is that it's nice and compact so it doesn't take up too much space in the home and you can easily carry it 
it around with the carry handles. Miko is a UK leading brand and the Miko dry range is a witch best buy as well. And if you're interested in finding out more about it or if you'd like to buy one for yourself, I'm gonna link all of the details and where you can buy it from on Amazon in the description box down below. So do check that out if you're interested. I feel like the air quality is feeling a lot better in this place and also the washing has been drying so much faster which is delightful. Okay, so back to the office organization and with the new shelves in place, it was time to find some storage containers. So before I put the shelves on, I've just been up to the loft and I've pulled out any shoe boxes that were up there and I've emptied them all out. They're all a bit grubby, but I'm going to use these for organization. So I just wanna use what I've got. I don't wanna be ordering in any unnecessary stuff. This probably will be quite a temporary kind of fix. I'm not sure if it will actually stay here long-term. So I'm, I don't know, we'll see. But maybe long-term it will be more used for kind of displaying things as opposed to shoe boxes full of stuff. But for now, I think these would be a good solution to get organized in here. So I'm gonna use what I've got. And I've just been sorting through the boxes and measuring them so then I can see where the next shelf can go. Now, this one is fixed because it's part of the construction of the shelves, but then all the rest, we can choose how high we want those to go. So I'm gonna figure it out now and see. I think I'm gonna put one just below this. And I'm gonna leave enough space that you can kind of reach down there because I think it might be quite useful just to throw cushions underneath because that's kind of a dead area otherwise. Or maybe even just stack paint tins down below. So yeah, I wanna have access here enough to get like a hand through. So I think if I put one shelf here, maybe no shelves there. I'm not sure, maybe one would look good. Just there. And we'll go from there. Don't stop, turn off the lights Nauseous, when I wake up Don't quit, I fell for you Okay, so here we are. I've got them all into position. I managed to find, by going around literally all the cupboards, I found one in the kitchen cupboard, I found ones in the bedroom. I've managed to get them all together and uh, measured, so they all fit quite nicely. And what I'm going to do next is just give them all a good wash in the bath. Um, in the shower because as you can see they've got dust on them from the loft but um, yeah I'll give them all a good clean I might even throw some bleach on them because they seem to have discoloured a little bit and then get everything nicely put back but I've got a few spare lids so there must be some more knocking around not sure what's happened to them so yeah I'm going to keep a hold of these lids for now I might find them and I've got a couple more black storage boxes but I'm not sure about those I might put something else up on the top there maybe even the um, champagne box, I might try that. Okay, I'm pleased with how that's looking, but I've had to stop for an emergency McDonald's. So here we are. I thought it'd be silly to carry on while the situation is just hunger. <laughs> so yeah, that's the situation now. Quick McDonald's. Sometimes you do just need to pause, get some food or get a bit of what you fancy and regroup especially when it comes to DIY, organizing, cleaning, any of those things. We need to keep our energy up. So, I've kind of had enough for today. I think what I'm going to do is get it all washed and then leave it to dry for tomorrow. And then we'll pick up with getting uh, the containers all organized. I'm actually sitting on the cardboard, which reminds me of, oops, which reminds me of when we first moved into this place and there was no carpet in this room. Well, there was carpet, but it wasn't in very good condition. So that all got pulled up, but because I'm always on a budget, I kept the underlay, because the underlay was in all right condition. And so while I was waiting for new carpet, I put cardboard down. <laughs> so sitting on the cardboard reminds me of that. Um, I don't know why I'm telling you that story, but there we are. Anyway, I will catch up with you tomorrow and we will get organizing all of the crates once they're nice and clean. everything out of the cupboard and I've just started to organize and I've also washed all of the crates now so I'm starting to put things into different crates categorize everything and get rid of stuff so it looks absolutely chaotic at the moment I've already just popped in a few things that I've already started to organize here so you know when you go to the shops and you think oh I need a 
roll of parcel tape or maybe I should just get some cellar tape because I don't have any at home yet this is the situation so <laughs> now I can see it all I'm not going to be doing that I've got a lot I've got plenty but I can use all that up because I can use it for posting parcels with I've done a crate here with the labeling machine and there's labels in there so that's all nicely together and I've started to sort out other things. I've got all my command hooks in one, I've got glues in another, I've got headphones in another, camera stuff in another. So I'm slowly just categorising, working around and trying to get some kind of order here and then we'll see what we're left with and what I can part with. I've also moved all of my paints up a little bit higher. I feel like they were in the metal crates and that was actually preventing me from just being able to reach through and see which ones I have. So when I'm doing projects, I think it's better to have them at eye height. So yeah, I've moved them up. And I just think it'll be a bit easier to go through and see exactly what I've got. Okay, the shelves above are up. You might notice that the top one looks wonky. I assure you it's completely straight. This is Victorian property for you. You'll always get slightly wonky ceilings and that sort of thing, but it's all good. It's all part of the character. think I am done. Let me show you the shelves. So this is how it's looking now. So I've got all the plastic storage boxes and then on top we have the champagne box which is actually still empty so I've got some more storage in there which I'm sure will come in very handy. Then above it I've put up these two prints. I feel like the champagne bottle ties in quite nicely with the box and then we have this scene which is a view of Paris and then we have this hanging plant from Abigail Ahern, a hanging plant from Primark. And both of these shelves were ones that I actually found. Somebody was moving house and throwing those out. And they're originally from Ikea. But I'm really pleased with how they're looking in the space. They kind of just fill it up a little bit more. And yeah, just fill up what was quite a dead area. So we've got lots of storage here. This is how I've organized it all. So I've got all my phone accessories in here and also things like phone cleaning stuff and then i've got glue gun a lot of glue sticks i've got all my sticky hooks i've got glue here i've also put staples in there but i've kept the labeling quite simple and then i've got camera headphones and then we've got paint labels as in label maker and tape and tape and then down here i've got uh, just prints stacked up that need to be hung but again once the loft's done, I'll be re-evaluating which prints go where. So that's a nice place to store the frames for the time being. And then over this side, I've just used one of the plastic brackets that I also found with those shelves. It's not looking the nicest there, but you know what? It will do for now. And if I find something nicer, I might introduce it. I might see if I can actually fix up the hook that I found in a skip, the brass one that you may have seen recently. And having sorted out the cupboard, it's looking a lot more spacious in here now. So I've just really thinned it all out. I've still got my pencils, pens and tools pots that I DIY'd. These are from Poundland, but they're just handy to grab. I can take the whole tray out and use those as and when I need to. And then on the other side, we just have a slightly more organized system with the paint so I can see exactly what I've got for DIY projects. And I found this little folding shelf in pound stretcher and this was 199 and it's just good to give a bit of height and I've put these boxes on top that have more pens cables and pencils that I sorted out I actually need to go through each of these individually now and be ruthless and sort out what's in them but we categorize we just need to edit <laughs> but that's uh, for another day then down here I've got sellotape and I've also got the hole punch and I feel like 
we need to pop the stapler here. I can't remember where that's got to. And then down here, I have cleared out quite a lot of space, which is going to be so handy because with clearing out the loft, I have things like tools up there and that sort of thing that will need to stay in the home but don't really have a home. So it'll be quite useful to shut those in there. And then I've got the wall that I had already. I've got some art supplies down here. And on this side, I've separated out string and twine. I've just got a couple of loose covers here. They're for DIY projects if I'm doing any spray painting. And then underneath, we have an empty container. So we have actually got some space now, which is brilliant because that will come in so handy as and when I move things down from the loft. So there we go, that is my new, slightly more organized office space with the addition of the new shelves. As I say, I don't know if they will stay there long-term or whether those boxes will stay there long-term because I'll probably end up having some kind of storage up in the loft and then I might be moving things up there in terms of my craft supplies and that sort of thing. But we'll see, I will figure that one out once we actually have the loft done and then get a better idea of where I want to put everything. But yeah, let me know what you think of it. Let me know if there's a space in your home that you're thinking of doing a similar thing with. I can recommend the shelves if you're after some cheap and cheerful shelving for your space as well. They were relatively <laughs> easy to build, as you saw. And yeah, I'm really pleased with how it's looking. It's good to be able to see everything finally and just see everything in place, keep it all nice and tidy. And I won't be buying any sellotape or any parcel tape anytime soon until I've worked my way through that lot. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do give it a little thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe if you're new here or if you haven't subscribed already for brand new videos every single week. Thank you again to Miko for sponsoring this video. I will leave all of their information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.